In this video, we'll dive deep into the fascinating history of Pemberton and how he created one of the most beloved beverages of all time. So grab a cold drink and join me as we uncover the incredible story of John Stiff Pemberton, the inventor of Coca-Cola. John Stiff Pemberton was a pharmacist and inventor from Atlanta, Georgia, best known for creating one of the world's most iconic brands, Coca-Cola. But Pemberton's journey to success was not always smooth. He was born on July 8, 1831 in Knoxville, Georgia. He was the son of James Clifford Pemberton and Martha Gant. He was the youngest of five children and grew up in a time of great change and opportunity in the United States. Not much is known about his early life, but it is believed that he grew up on a farm and received a basic education. Pemberton began studying to become a pharmacist and eventually became a licensed pharmacist in 1850. In 1853, he married Anne Eliza Clifford, and the pair moved to Columbus, Georgia. Their only child, Charles Ney Pemberton, was born in 1854. As a young man, he began experimenting with different ingredients and formulas for various remedies and tonics. And in 1855, he established a wholesale retail drug business specializing in materia medica, substances used in the composition of medical remedies. Essentially, he was selling the raw materials for pharmaceutical remedies. In 1861, the Civil War broke out, and Pemberton was recruited by the State Guards of Georgia, part of the Confederate States of America. During his service, he achieved the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the 3rd Georgia Cavalry Battalion and was nearly killed in the battle at Columbus in April 1865. After that battle, Pemberton became addicted to morphine. That addiction would become the foundation of Coca-Cola and one of the causes of his death. After the war, Pemberton returned to his profession as a pharmacist and formed a partnership with Columbus physician Austin Walker. With the goal of creating new products and selling medicines and photography supplies, Pemberton expanded his laboratory. He also ventured into the cosmetics industry and found success with a perfume called Sweet Southern Bouquet. In 1870, he moved with his family to Atlanta, formed a partnership with larger investors under the name Pemberton, Wilson, Taylor and Company, and also established himself in the city's medical community, serving as a trustee of Atlanta Medical College, now Emory University Medical School. His labs were modern and advanced, and still serve as a soil and crop chemical testing facility for the Georgia Department of Agriculture. Throughout this time, Pemberton struggled with a morphine addiction and began to search for a remedy. At the same time, in Italy, a chemist named Angelo Mariani combined coca leaves with French wine and created a drink called Vin Mariani. The drink was a massive success. Jules Verne, Alexander Dumas, and Arthur Conan Doyle were among literary figures said to have used it. Seeing the commercial success of Vin Mariani, John Pemberton created the first ever version of cola named Pemberton's French Wine Coca. His product contained coca leaves from South America, which were precursors to cocaine, and Pemberton billed the drink, which was served at pharmacy counters as a nerve tonic, a mental aid, a headache remedy, and a cure for morphine addiction. He admitted to an Atlanta newspaper reporter that he had based Pemberton's French wine coca on an Italian French product, Vin Mariani, but added extracts from other tropical plants. The caffeine containing cola nut produced by a genus of African trees, and Damiana, a Central American shrub leaf reputed to have aphrodisiac properties. The drink was launched in 1885 and was a success, but Pemberton's happiness was short lived. Just one year later, the discussion of alcohol prohibition began to circulate within Atlanta's city government, and it was eventually implemented. Concerned that his rapidly growing product could be banned, Pemberton began new experiments in his Atlanta home on Marietta Street, using a home laboratory where he would work late into the night. He created an industrial-sized mixing and filtration system that ran from the second floor of his house to the ground level. He sent samples of his new alcohol-free syrups to local pharmacies for testing and asked his nephews to report on customer feedback. A significant breakthrough came when he added citric acid to balance the sweetness of the sugar-based syrup. 
By May of 1886, Pemberton was ready with his final formula, which was put on sale in syrup form at Atlanta's Jacob Pharmacy. Pemberton formed a new Pemberton Chemical Company to market his new drink, putting his son Charles in charge of production. It was Pemberton's bookkeeper, Frank Robinson, who was also one of his partners in the new business, who came up with the name Coca-Cola, referring to the drink's two active ingredients, and devised the antique script logo still in use today. Without alcohol, in its first year of operation, Coca-Cola sales only amounted to $50, which Pemberton deemed a failure as he had spent $70 on supplies. However, Robinson believed that more exposure was needed and convinced Pemberton to invest in marketing efforts, such as giving away free drink coupons and advertising Coca-Cola in Atlanta with banners, streetcar placards, and store awnings displaying the message, Drink Coca-Cola. The product soon gained popularity across the city, and Pemberton was convinced it would become a national sensation. Unfortunately, Pemberton did not live to see his invention's success. He was suffering from stomach cancer and gradually sold off two-thirds of his interest in the company to other investors, including Asa G. Candler, as his condition worsened. He retained one-third for his son. In his last months, he repeatedly visited his laboratory in search of further improvements to the Coca-Cola formula, convinced that celery extract was the key to an even more attractive taste. Pemberton died on August 16, 1888, leaving his wife in a difficult financial situation. He was 57 years old. A struggle for control of Coca-Cola ensued after his death. The financial machinations that occurred were complex, with rights to both the name Coca-Cola and the formula for the drink under dispute, and it is unclear how Asa Candler gained control of the company from Charles Pemberton and the other investors. By 1905, fresh coca leaves were removed from Coca-Cola, and by the 1930s, the drink had become a staple of American culture. Today, the brand is recognized and enjoyed by people all over the world, making Pemberton one of the most successful and influential business people in history. And there you have it, the remarkable and captivating story of John Stith Pemberton, the creator of Coca-Cola, a tale of resilience, innovation, and perseverance, underscored by personal struggles and battles. Pemberton's legacy is a testament to the power of creativity and determination, a man whose vision, though not fully realized in his lifetime, went on to become a global sensation. Thank you for joining me on this incredible journey. If you found this story as fascinating as I did, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. For more intriguing stories from history and beyond, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications.